Mark, thank you so much for joining our carpool down to ITI. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Now, Mark, for our viewers, could you kind of uh, give us a bit of background to yourself? Could you tell us you know, your name, your job role and, uh, and your organisation, please? All right. So I'm Mark Budd and I head up Innovation for Zurich in the UK. Uh, I've been to Zurich about nine, ten years. I've yeah. previously worked for Aviva and HSBC. Uh, yeah, and I've held various roles across those organisations. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I mean, insurance is going through such a revolution currently, I think. It's almost emulating what banking did maybe 10 years ago. For you to be in that insurance space at this point in time must be absolutely incredible. What excites you the most? I think the, uh, the, the exciting thing is, is the power of technology, but yeah. I want to make sure we frame that in the right way. So the okay. power of technology allows us to do things that we simply couldn't do before. We can create new products and services that we didn't have. Yeah. We can interact with customers in ways we've never we've never dreamt of before. Um, one of the problems is the market, when we're at ITI today, yeah. the market is flooded with new and excited technology. So on, on the end of the... <laughs> it's too exciting. Try and, and the insurer's <laughs> end of that, yeah. to some degree, it's quite a difficult journey to pick the right one. Right, yes. Um, the other bit is technology uh, without the use case is just interesting technology. <laughs> a bit of a gimmick. It's not so much a gimmick. I mean, it's great technology. I mean, mm. it works, but it, sometimes we'll get people come and talk to us and they want to talk to us about their API deck or their AI suite. But that's great. Yeah. How, what problem is it going to solve for me? Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Don't get me wrong. It's exciting. It's, it, just, it just has its challenges and it's not always, it's not as easy as you might think. No, I can imagine. And to be able to have that, that state of mind to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff, like this is what my customer needs, this is what my customer actually will want. That must be quite a difficult task in insurance. I mean, you know, how do you find that core ingredient of what a customer actually wants? So, you're right. Lots of the technologies that we see are solution, and the, sure. value, the chain in which we look at it at is problem, solution, value. Yep. So we start with the problem. Okay. Um, often the problem is a hypothesis, or we, or we can derive a problem from customer complaints data maybe yeah. there are places where we can derive problems sure or we've got a perceived problem sometimes yep. the problem we think we've got when we get under the skin of it isn't the problem we've actually got wow okay. um, but we would go through a process of creating some assumed needs yes and then run a series of experiments to validate or disprove that need what you're really trying to do is get a, a more laser guided understanding of being really clear what that need is being yeah. really clear what the problem is then you can go and find a solution that matches it incredible i mean you always feel like oh you, it's just going to be obvious what the customer wants but actually when you boil it down in insurance what does the customer want you actually have to go through this rigorous testing and that's fascinating the methodology on that very much and and, and you know in, when i say customers i yeah. do mean external customers and yeah. the customers in personal lines are very different from the customers in retail very different oh from the customers in life yeah very different from the customers in commercial insurance mm -hmm. so the the customer spectrum is broad and varied wow we okay. also talk about customer being employees we've got thousands of employees using the tech to serve the customers they equally have problems that can be solved by new and innovative solutions yeah so. and you see that's brilliant this is a good good example of the fact that you're able to cater to your own you know your own employees you're obviously doing something right well oft often even if you start with the customer pain when you get yeah. down to root cause mm -hmm. the pain could be ineffective processes, ineffective technology, yeah. a whole host of things that we control um, that we need to solve internally and by moving the pain internally you actually end up moving, removing the pain for the customer. Well we've set the scene as to what you really do on a day to day. That Let's take a step back and, and look at you know your, your story and how you got there. You know what kind of kickstarted Mark's you know movement into insurance. <laughs> my my um my planned move to insurance. <laughs> um, so I came. My first job was um, I was taken on at HSBC Bank to be an underwriter. I didn't know what an underwriter was. Yeah. Uh, I did eight weeks underwriting training. <laughs> okay. Um, and on my very first day of being an underwriter, I was seconded to an IT project to test the underwriting system. Um, so I never did any underwriting. Wow. I went straight into IT, I became a tester. From then on, I went to be a developer. 
a project manager, a program manager, I've been head of delivery, head of development, head of architecture, head of change in IT. So these things have kind of morphed. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess it's a testament to insurance actually. There are yeah. so many and that that's just a career path in IT. Sure. You could say the same in marketing or operations or claims or under IT and there yeah. are wide and varied career paths for insurance. Um, yeah. It's a huge business and although you need all those component parts to run a business, so it certainly kept me interested over the years. And and how did I get the innovation job? So Oh yeah. There's um, been so many moving parts that yeah, yeah, you finally so get there. I guess I've always I've, I've always been interested in um, doing things differently not necessarily for different sake sure but one of the things that always gets my goat is we've always done it that way so that oh, kind of is my right, that's yeah. my fire yeah that gets me going so um i mean in an industry that's been operating for over 300 years in the uk alone yeah there must be some serious kind of backlog of well we've always done it this way and you can't assume any other right i that is i do hear that sometimes no. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> So yeah, so I've always been, I've always, when I've been in roles or I'm responsible for projects or running projects yeah. or whatever, tried to think about different ways of doing things. So there was an example pre an innovation role where we were trying to develop a customer portal yeah. um, for a large set of commercial customers. Uh, and we put customer, eight customers in a, week, in a room for a week and we derived the requirements that way rather than wow. spending months I mean, that's a really uh, human way of actually kind of getting I, to the root of the problem, right? I, it was so much fun yeah. and so much clearer yeah. in terms of need, what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I, I would seriously ask why we're not engaging customers more often when we're developing mm. products and services. So yeah. um, that way of doing things, I think, kind of appeals to me. And um, the innovation role came up when probably about five years ago, I guess, when InsurTech was really sort of starting to become a thing yeah. in the footsteps of FinTech. Um, all the insurers had their X functions or labs or or whatever they were. And yeah. I think I had a conversation with our CEO at the time. I think there was a conversation, said, what would you do if, and it kind of, it kind of, ah. kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and then we built an internal capability. Our, our, our role actually, but we looked at some of the different models of, um, innovation functions, if you like, with, with one model being an exclusive tech lab type environment, which, yeah. which the pros of that, they spin really cool stuff up really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to try and infect the organization from a mindset perspective a little bit more. So we, we didn't opt for that model. We opted sure. for a, more of a facilitation model. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think as I said earlier, our, our role really is to take problems from anywhere in, in the business, validate the problem, go in search of a solution, pilot it, scale the ones that make sense yeah now if you were to describe yourself in three words how would you describe yourself tough one isn't it <laughs> only three mm. oh, my friends could probably do it in two <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'd say I'm competitive yeah Compassionate, nice, and inquisitive. Oh, that's a brilliant combination, especially one for someone in your role. I'm not sure if you ask me again, I give you the same combination. <laughs> there you go. Now we've talked about bugbears of the industry. We've talked about um, really what it, it can do in the future, and. What are the biggest opportunities? Because you're you're the guy that you know the front end of innovation. Where is it leading to? So uh, there are so many opportunities. Part of the problem is which opportunity to choose. Yeah. Um, and the way we we tend to look at those opportunities, we frame them in what we call horizons. Um, oh. And the, the first horizon is essentially uh, making better products and services that we. Sure. And there is loads of opportunity in that. Um, and a lot of the startups you see at companies like ITI um, help in that space. They make us engage with our customers better with the process products we've already got. They yep. make us make better decisions. They make our processing quicker. And that's a rise in one stuff. And there's there's so much to be done there. So loads of opportunity there. Yep. And those things typically we look at them, we look at them through a one to two year lens. Right. Um, so fairly quick turnaround. And those 
part of the reason those those things get a lot of um, traction and uh, airtime yeah. is because we're solving the problems of the now, and the business is, is incentivized in the now. Mm -hmm. the, the annual targets are annual targets. Yeah. So there's, you can understand why there's a lot of appetite to do things in that immediate horizon. Sure. Um, beyond that, in the second horizon, we're probably talking about new products or services. Um, I guess loosely translated, that would be new streams of revenue. Um, so they might be products that are probably harder to get to, yeah. but allow you to diversify over time. Mm -hmm. um, so things like um, parametric propositions, yep. um, IoT propositions, so IoT in property particularly is one of my um, one of the things I'm trying to champion in that we use telematics in cars we use telematics in life insurance yeah there's an awful lot of data in buildings and the industry isn't great at using that data as, no. a, as a measure of risk yet yeah um, so I think that will in that second horizon that's an example of where I think we'll see new products and services and then the third horizon I guess is um, things that are a little bit further out there driverless cars yeah. Um, what are we going to do with driverless cars? I mean, <laughs> what you, are we going to do is because you robots. ascertain where the risk lies effectively. You guys are the the are the key holders to the innovation. It is. Are you, in, are you insuring the software now? Yeah. I mean, f who knows at this point? You know, I think that's. The, I think that. So that's. So that's. The, so that's again in, in a time frame. That yeah. second horizon is probably two to five years. Yeah. We're probably in the three to ten year window. Aye. Um, and the reality is for even an organisation the size of Zurich, is that it probably doesn't make sense to do that in every country. No. Would you do that in Germany and Italy and the UK and, 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 and North America? Probably not. So those types of innovation are probably, probably sit better at a group level. Invite the countries to participate, but really we're trying to solve it. You're in an organisation that has to be able to change and cultivate depending on insurance cultures. Yeah. And, and and I think with those with those with those topics where there is high degrees of uncertainty, yeah, it just wouldn't be efficient to do that in, in every country. It'd be, no. It makes sense to bring some of the early thinking together at a group level and share yeah. and collaborate and iterate around what we think might happen and what we might want to do about it. Yeah, we need to think about those horizons of innovation because if we don't if we spend all our time in horizon one. Yeah. Uh, we'll never develop those products and services for the future. So it's, it's an ongoing process. So yeah. good news is I'm not going to run out of road anytime soon. <laughs> Hopefully we won't either, but it seems like London is <laughs> causing us some grief to get to the Greenwich Peninsula for ITI. And I mean, these conferences, obviously there's a lot of people that are trying to showcase things to you, but obviously you're hearing and seeing all this innovation. Um, you know, what what makes you come to these events? What what are you excited for at ITI in particular? Uh, so I, li I like to come to see if there's anything I've missed. Yeah. Um, from a technology perspective, wow, yeah. I like to come and speak to other people from insurance mm -hmm. uh, to see what their experiences are. Yeah. It's a good chance to catch up with people I haven't seen for a while. Sure. Um, I probably only do two or three of these a year. Yeah. Um, and ITI is one of the one of the biggest ones and. Um, there are a whole a whole host of good reasons to go. There's not one particular reason, but sure. it's, it's keeping myself up to date with what's going on around yeah. outside the, our own organisation, to, be, to be, be totally honest. Because you can't effectively know what all innovation is at all times, really. You could spend an awful lot of time trying to, Yeah. Um, but to the point I was trying to make earlier, you, you need to be guided about the problem you're trying to solve, mm. else you will just end up down rabbit holes and swamped with great technology yeah. that you're not sure what to do with. Yeah, yeah. We've had a very customer facing conversation, but you know, you do so much more than that. You actually I imagine you're looking at innovation to help your employees. Well, we right? did we did yeah we did touch on that briefly. I, I the experience of the employee mm. has an impact on the customer, so yeah. you can't detach the two. Um, plus, from a talent perspective, I mean, 75% mm. of the population will be millennials and Gen Zs by 2025, of the working population. So, you know, we need to keep our own internal applications yeah. modern and easy to use, yeah. else we just won't retain the talent. No. Simple as that. Yeah.